But we know that our daily lives would not be the same without batteries. There's, ba there's a battery inside your laptop, inside your smartphone. There's batteries inside of all your small electronics. There are batteries that are rechargeable and there are batteries that are not. Um, we also know that we need large scale energy storage. Uh, so that would be super large batteries. Uh, we need energy storage in the form of chemical batteries to fully utilize the alternative energies that are not 24 seven like wind or solar. And we need to move forward to those alternative energies. Um, we take for granted the chemistry of the reactions that are used to store energy in batteries, uh, but we will be getting into those chemical reactions. Hello? Hello? My battery died again? With all the advances we have in portable electronics, when will we have batteries that will truly last through a day of heavy use? Every day, we rely on batteries to start our vehicles and power our electronic devices. But we take for granted the role that chemistry plays in storing this energy. Each one of these batteries can be thought of as a chemical storehouse, which will release energy to your device on demand. However, new batteries such as lithium ion are no longer limited to powering electronics, but are now being applied to vehicles. Alongside batteries, fuel cells can also deliver energy as needed. Here, we use solar energy to split water into oxygen and hydrogen gases. This stored energy is then used to power devices such as this propeller. Even with environmentally responsible sources of energy, the sun doesn't always shine, nor does the wind always blow. Regardless of the energy source, we really need an efficient way to store energy to be used whenever or wherever we need it. Now let's go inside the battery and discover the chemistry of energy storage devices. Different types of batteries shown right here. The main types of batteries are these are household or alkaline batteries. And the chemical reactions inside of these alkaline batteries are different from, this is a car battery, this is a lead acid battery. So different battery, a different battery type means a different chemical reaction that's going on inside the battery. So we're going to get into the different the main types of batteries and those reactions and how the chemical energy is converted into electrical energy to generate electricity for the device or even for a car. And uh, we'll look into the different types of cars, gasoline powered, hybrid, electric cars, and even hydrogen fuel cell cars. These are standard household ba household batteries and you can see they're different sizes. There's a C, here's a double A, here's a D, and here's a triple A. They're different sizes and what is exactly the same about them is that they all have the same chemical reaction inside going on. Now um, inside a battery there's a, a series of cells and so it's more than one reaction. It's a series of reactions, the same reaction over and over in a stack. They're wired together and each individual reaction or each individual layer where there's a reaction going on is called a galvanic cell. And so this is true also in a lead acid battery in a car, is that there's a series of galvanic cells, a series of the same, but this is all occurring inside of the battery. So there's a conversion of energy from chemical energy, that's stored chemical energy stored in the bonds, to electrical energy. Electrochemistry is the branch of chemistry that deals with the conversion of chemical to electrical energy. And in this example, this uh, chemical energy comes from, there is inside of the battery, two types of metals typically. And um, there's generally going to be two things. So it can be two metals, it can be two materials, but in one of those metals, electrons are lost. And that is the process of oxidation. Okay, so zinc is, the, is one metal in this example. And this zinc loses two electrons. That's what this means, is this loses two electrons and becomes, this is Zn plus two, this is the zinc ion. Remember, zinc always forms a plus two ion. And in this losing the two electrons, these two electrons are transferred. There's a transfer of electrons from one substance to another. And so this can only happen if there's another substance that can accept two electrons. So this is this plus two electrons. This gains or accepts two electrons. 
And the thing that does that in this example is this copper ion. It's not just the copper ion because copper can be plus two or plus one. So this is the copper two or the cupric ion. And this becomes, in the process of gaining those two electrons, becomes elemental copper with no charge. So it's no longer an ion. Okay, so this is spontaneous. And this is happening inside a uh, copper-zinc battery. And this process of gaining electrons is called reduction. And so both of these have to happen at the same time. You must have both oxidation, that's the losing electrons, and the reduction, that's the gaining electrons, happening at the same time. So when you put it together, this is called redox. It's not possible to have only oxidation or only reduction. And so in this end result is that electrons end up being transferred. So there's a transfer of electrons. These two electrons go from zinc and they cross over in a galvanic cell, um, a bunch of layers, they cross over and are transferred to the um, electrons that are gained by the copper. The result, when you have a movement of electrons, when you have a movement of electrons, the result is electrical energy. That's the definition of electrical energy. You can have a movement of electrons or a movement of charges.